Hey Trum, do you want to be a part of the attack dance team or something? I don't think this is gonna fit you. Sorry Chum, there's always next year. Twenty twenty three has been a landmark year for the indoor football league. Our fifteenth season saw tremendous growth, both on and off the field. Bold steps towards a bright future, cutting edge fan engagement, and powerful new partnerships. And we're just getting started. There will be more in twenty twenty four. Calculated growth, strong franchises, and the best indoor football on the planet. The IFL. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Inside the Sharks Podcast. I am your host, Jim Renier, alongside me, my partner, Crom by Book. Going on, Jim. How's the off, nope. how's the off season, Bob? Or off week? Good? Off week? It's. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, these changes and seeing what these two new players can bring in. And looking forward to being in the Shark Tank Saturday night. This so Saturday been a good night bye week. Against Vegas. Yep, and we'll we'll get to all the Eastern Conference talk of our observations of this week. Uh, before then, we have a special guest. Everyone knows him. He's been with the Jacksonville Shark organization for a few years, um, living the semi-retired ish life, but also a head coach or coach white life. Now other than Skip Marvin Skip Rouse. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Jim? How you doing, Bob? How you doing, Skip? Good. Uh, First off, how is coaching life compared to being a player? Well, uh, I've been coaching for a few years now, but, um, you know, it's very different. But, uh, you know, it's kind of the same as far as looking at film and developing game plans to win games. Uh, but now it's more about, um, you know, giving back to the community and helping the youth uh, further their path to where they want to go. Has the NAL, with all the changes with the NAL landscape, has that affected high school? Because I know you're over there at Trinity Christian. So has that boiled down and affected anything yet? Are the players talking about it? Or what are you hearing? As far as what? Say it again, though. As far as what? The, NAL, the name, image, and likeness. NIL. That's oh. NIL. <laughs> uh, I haven't heard uh, too much about it. Um too much. I just be going there and coaching and getting ready for the games, getting ready for the spring. Um, I know I've seen a few articles about it, but I don't know too much about it for the high school game yet. Is recruiting as uh, – you're a coach now, so you're not part of any type of recruiting like back in the day when you went to FAM. How is it uh, when coaches come to t uh, train your Christian to recruit one of your kids? How – describe that, that feeling like, okay, I know he's good, but – do you lead them the right direction? Like, yeah, you're good, but you're not D1 good. You're probably, you know, D2 or NAIA. How's that recruiting process when you're trying to get one of your kids to a, a, the second level or the third level in college um, in athletics? Well, pretty much, you know, we want them to make their own decision and uh, choose what, be what best fits them. Uh, we're going to give them all the tools we can as far as training them and getting them ready for whatever level that it is. Uh, we are pretty much uh, just excited that, you know, the kids is getting the opportunity to keep playing and also to uh, get an education for free. Yeah. <clears throat> is there, so who's the, who's the star coming out this year? Who's the, who's, who do you think has a chance to play in the next level that's at Trinity? If, if somebody likes to follow high school football, who's a player to keep their eye on? Mm. Uh, right now we have a very young team. Uh, a lot of guys haven't been, uh, haven't done anything on the varsity level yet, but we have a, a good amount of kids uh, that's coming. We don't have too many seniors this year either, but we have a great team. I feel like uh, 
we're young, but I feel like we'll be very exciting. And uh, y'all should come to a couple games and uh, let me know who you think. Well, I might go to the first one because Trinity's traveling to – well, it's not a long road trip. It's literally just across the street. You guys played at White Week 1 at the season. As the schedule, I think, was released just like last week for this upcoming season. So uh, who does Trinity Christian have for the first couple of weeks of the season, if you if you remember? Well, I don't remember, but I know one thing about football. You just take it one game at a time. Uh uh, uh, for the spring game, we play Fletcher, so we'll get to see a lot of those young guys uh, play, and we'll get a better feel for how they play in a live action game. So um, we're very excited about that and ready to see what we have to bring to the table this year. Who's Trinity Christian's rival? I mean, I know I went to Orange Park, and it was Ridgeview, Clay High, it was rival, but being Trinity, being a private school, do they have rivals? And maybe Baker County? Is that what Skyler's saying? I know, saying? right? Thank, thank you, Skyler. <laughs> but, uh, you know, our rival would be uh, Bowles. Um, we always have uh, great matchups. We uh, just recently started playing on an every year basis, probably about six or seven years ago. Um, a lot of people like to say University of Christian. Uh, that's a great game as well. But, you know, they, they beat us uh, one time in the past, you know, 30 years. They got us in the playoffs when it counted. But so I couldn't really call that a rival. But uh, Bowles. I feel would be a, a great rival for us because we played them in the early 90s when we had some uh, historical teams and also the past few years when we had historical teams. So so University Christians, like like the Sharks or Orlando, where you beat them so much, it's not even like a robbery. <laughs> 11 and 23. I'm not going to talk too much trash. I respect University Christian, but, um, yeah, you know, they have a lot of catching up to do when it comes to the head-to-head battle. <laughs> Easy now, guys. Our our boys practice at University Christian. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm going to talk about Orlando. You can talk about Orlando. You want to talk about Orlando. Well, one thing I noticed about Trinity Christian over the years, this is me being a from a white commander. Um, they, they're not winning as many state titles anymore since they've jumped up competition. It's like. Yeah, you you can beat the Wake Forests and the Dukes of the world. Now you're playing against the Alabamas and the Georgias of the world in the, in the mm-hmm. state of Florida. Um, and this is coming from a white guy where we're happy to make the playoffs if we <laughs> make the playoffs. Maybe one week and then we're done. Uh, but one of the games I did remember watching Trinity Christian a couple years ago, you guys had a running back um, slash quarterback. He went to, I think, Miami or Miami or Florida, and I watched him play against, I want to say it was against Reigns in the playoff game. And the guy by himself ran for like 200-some yards, just by himself. Uh, like, that's probably Trayon Webb, if anything. He's at Florida right now. So if it was Florida, uh, he's number Webb, five. Yeah. Uh, he'll be a sophomore. Uh, he just uh, recently, I believe, he's graduating um, as a sophomore already. So, you know, we're proud of him, and we're ready to see what he do this year as well. But we have a lot of great athletes, um, and we have a great coach, Coach Dormany. He's been there for over 30 years. He coached all the athletes that came through, and we appreciate him as well. So back in your FAMU days, where was one stadium that you loved to go play at? Mm. Well, it, I w- it would have to be the Citrus Bowl because that's where we played the, uh, the Classic, the Orlando Classic against uh, BCU. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it'll be – 55,000 people there at the game. Um, but I also had a chance of playing uh, in the Atlanta Classic at the uh, Georgia Dome and a lot of NFL uh, stadiums such as Landshark Stadium in Miami and uh, LP Stadium in Nashville. So uh, we had a few places that we played that I enjoyed playing at. And, of course, as fam, you travel to a lot of bigger schools week one, like Miami, Florida. If you, I think Did you go to Florida when you were at fam? Uh, no, when I was there, we played uh, Miami two years when they had uh, Ja'Cory Harris at quarterback, um, Ray Ray Armstrong, Travis Benjamin. Um, mm-hmm. And then we played USF with uh, B.J. Daniels at quarterback. And then my sa- my senior year, we played uh, Oklahoma when they had uh, Landry Jones and Kenny Stills and a uh, freshman Sterling Shepard. That's those are some good teams. BJ, yeah. Dan- that, that's South. I think that was the last time South Florida was even good. Is when BJ Daniels was. <laughs> yeah, they they were ranked top five when we played them. Yeah. Was that uh, Jason Pierre-Paul? You, you, uh, you 
Pierre Paul wasn't there. No, he wasn't there at that time. No, there's they two, had Sam there, Barrington from Jacksonville and uh, Kayvon Webster. I was going to say, there's two different types of Pierre Pauls. Pierre Paul with all his fingers or Pierre Pauls only with six? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't play him. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm happy we didn't play him. <laughs> well, I know you're – this is a Tallahassee chat because, as you know, me and Bob are big floor State fans. For sure. Uh, there's a certain chicken restaurant in Tallahassee on Tennessee Street. So, like, you could say it's like a Zaxby's Chick-fil-A, but just for Tallahassee. Yeah. Gun, Gun Threes. Got what's these, your yeah. What's your go-to at Gun Threes? Ah, the gut box. That's my man. That's with There it extra, is. With there it toast. is. Good box with an extra toast in there, man. Maybe an extra tender, to, depending on how I feel. See, if, if, if you ever, fans, if you ever go to Tallahassee, don't go to Zaxby's. Don't go to, Chick -fil <laughs> go to Guthrie's. Go to <laughs> That's a place to go, and you'll get better food. And actually, last time I was there, it was actually cheaper than actual Zaxby's. So. For sure, yeah. But have you been to Tallahassee recently? Uh, I went to Tallahassee probably a year ago. Yeah, I went to Tallahassee. I haven't been to a FAMU game in a while, but I'm going to go to homecoming this year for sure. I was going to say, FAM has a lot of stadium renovations underway. So, yes. Looks like they're updating their stuff. I know Florida State's updating half their stadium right now. So, and it's interesting. Uh, Tallahassee, I think, was home to undefeated teams this year. Uh, we're not going to count that exposition game down I in know. Miami. I know. Um, that. But yeah, it, Tallahassee was uh was you know popping last year in football, and people understand that city is rocks when football yeah. is elite. So, and again, that's just me, Floor State, you, fam, yeah, graduate Floor sure. State, you're a graduated fam. So yeah, good old tally days, miss those exactly. days. <laughs> but had a lot of fun for sure. Now let's get on to our team here, the Jacksonville Sharks. Uh, as a former player. What's your observation of the team? Well, I feel uh, we have a lot of rookies on the team. It's a, uh, it's a new league, so even some of the vets are basically rookies to the new rules. Um, our coaches are uh, as well. But I feel uh, we only can take you know take it one, one game at a time. Uh, we was in there a few times in a couple of the games. And, um, you know, if we, I just feel we need to stop the run. Uh, do better on special teams and just score on turnovers. And, um, you know, like an old cliche saying, you got to, you know, win at least two out of the three phases, you know. And if we do that, I feel we'll have a way better chance of coming out with a victory. Now, you played for Gibson in Columbus. You played for Gibson in Jacksonville. Has he changed much since you played for him in Columbus? Or is it the same old Gibson um, from Columbus to Jacksonville days? Uh, I feel like it's the uh, same Coach Gibson. Um, you know, he comes out, comes up with great game, game plans. You know, we had a week off this week, so I feel like, you know, he'll come back with ready to go for uh, Las Vegas. Um, one thing about Coach Gibson, he's not going to allow things to keep happening, um, and I feel that's great as a coach to allow to not allow, you know, the same thing to go over, you know, um, over and over. They call that insanity, so, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like he'll have the team ready this week, and I'll be in the house ready cheering them on. Any player on the team that caught your eye so far, especially on the defensive side of the ball? On the defensive side of the ball, uh, Breon, um, you know, uh, you know, Jabari is my guy. Uh, I hang out with them guys uh, a couple times during the week, you know, talk to them, watch some film with them. Um, and uh, on offense side of the ball, uh, the hometown kid, uh, Peyton, um, I, 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 from what I seen last game, you know, he made a diving catch in the first quarter, you know, uh, not not fearing the wall, you know, to be a rookie and do that. Uh, I feel like that's a big upside, you know, um, and probably could help us in, in the time, you know, in the near future. And he has a lot of energy as well. So I just feel we just need to bring more energy and never feel like we're out of the game because we know how arena football works mm -hmm. and uh, just try and win one game at a time. Have you been a part of organizations or teams that have come out of the gate slow? Uh, every now and then it happens, yes. But um, the thing is not to allow it to happen for the whole year, you know. Mm -hmm. um, not to allow it to happen for the whole year. You know, um, sometimes, you know, the offense usually 
comes out slower because they have to develop chemistry. The defense these be the guys that come out fast. So, uh, you know, after a couple of weeks, you know, I feel like everybody should be honed in on the scheme and ready to make plays. How big is it to be playing in the Shark Tank this week? Like you've got, you've played in the Shark Tank, you played against the Shark Tank. As a player, how much are the fans going to feed um, this weekend? Well, uh, as a player and even as a coach now, I always uh, used to preach that every week was a big week. Uh, you know, coming out in the stretch lines, you know, no matter what week it was, oh, it's a big week. So, um, you know, the biggest week is always the week that's coming up. So, uh, you know, we just got to come ready to play, you know, give the energy to the fans so we can be rocking in there. You know, the louder it gets in uh, the shark tank, the harder it is for the for the uh, lat, for the team to uh, the opposing team to play. So, you know, as long as we start fast and finish strong, we should be good. With the zero and three start, I know a lot. You know, shark fans. You, I guarantee, you look at Facebook every day and you see <laughs> some post, or someone going on some rant, and. I, I, I know you as a former player, you try to ignore social media, but as a now spectator and you see all the naysayers or the haters just, you know, flexing their muscles right now before if they're, uh, if a turnaround does happen, how much as a player did you look into that and use that as bulletin board material, even though it wasn't, you know, presented in the locker room? Well, you got to uh, try and find anything to use as fuel, you know, um, any small thing, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. They, I heard stories about them. They would make up things in their head about the opposing player or the opposing team, so they can go out there and have that chip on their shoulder. So, you know, you know, little things like that you use as bulletin board material, even if it is people that's for you or against you. Um, just, but just don't go out there and do too much. Still got to play within yourself and be where your feet are. So, uh, you know, execute the game plan. So, um. I would use it as uh, fuel because, you know, we need a victory. You know, it's a big game. Like we say, it's the next game, so it's the biggest game. And uh, we just, just got to start getting on the road. How did that feel last year winning that championship? Oh, it felt great. You know, um, winning it in Jacksonville um, the first time in 2017. I left early and went to the CFL, so I wasn't able to – you know, cherish that moment with, with my friends, you know, like uh, Eric McIntosh or Jabari Gorman or Mishai. And, you know, it was a lot of guys, uh, C. Lou, Big Mo, R.I.P. And, um, you know, everybody, I can't name everybody, but, you know, there's a lot of guys that I couldn't cherish it with. So to be able to come back and win and not only win, but win it in the shark tank and still have Jabari with me and, and E. Mac, Eric McIntosh with me, you know, it felt great. You know, I can't I can't even really explain it. You know, uh, it felt great to do it. Look up in the sands and see my family and friends and then to come back on Saturday and see the banner up there and know that it's going to be up there forever. You know, it's kind of like uh, speechless. So what what team is better, the 17 team or the last year team? Because them both teams were stacked. <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. I I can't. I don't know. I can't. I can't. <laughs> they were both great teams. I can't. You know, I I was on both of the teams. I was younger, you know, in seventeen, but I was wiser in twenty three. So, uh, I take the older me with the with uh, Coach Gibson and um, you know, and my guys. I just take twenty twenty three. He's basically taking a mobile quarterback over a statue. <laughs> yeah. And the coaching staff. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> uh, actually, no, Grady got hurt earlier, so that wasn't Grady. Uh, it was a mix of uh, Boltis and uh, Fleming. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, Fleming yeah. came in. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, well. Fleming was my guy. You know, we played in college together, so even not – not being able to cherish it with him as well, but we know we talk every week. That's my brother, and uh, I love him. And um, you know, it's just great seeing that, seeing him win one too. So I know last year is last year, and, and we see a lot of fans, bakers like, well, shark fans are still talking about their championship last year. Well, bre breaking news: you got fans in the NFL that still celebrated championship <laughs> twenty years ago, and that's the last time their team won championship was twenty years ago. 
Yes. Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm kind of shouting out the Packer fans over there. They celebrate <laughs> their next Super Bowl from 15 years ago, like it was last year. But not all Packer fans. Any great moments last year that you like? May I want to relive that moment besides the championship game? Mm, just the, uh, you know, the road trips and, and and being able to travel with the teammates and uh, you know joking and laughing in the locker room. Those are things that you know are not gonna ever come back. You know, um, so I those moments. I it's too many to name. You know too many guys that uh, I develop a, a, a life friendship with mm-hmm. to even name like one or two particular things, but just, you know, enjoying the time that we spent together, uh, joking, laughing, working, watching film and become being a champion every day. So we could be champions at the end of the year. So Phil says that he's missed the field. So I got, so I asked Renfro this, the first game, I said, Hey, did you get an itch when you knew it was getting close to game time? Did you want to go back and put the pads on? So did you get that itch and want to be back on the field at all? Of course. Yeah, for sure. Uh, especially when, you know, I'm going around hanging out with uh, Jabari and Breon and, and uh, Moon and, you know, all the guys that I played with and, and blood, sweat and tears, uh, Jeremiah Price, you know, all these guys and, and, and laughing and joking with them and talking with them about practice. But, you know, I was at work, but, you know, usually I'll be at practice. It's definitely different. So I definitely had that itch and walking into the arena, you know, waiting outside for tickets instead of putting on pads is two totally different things, you know. So I definitely You're waiting it. outside? Come yeah, on, Steve. Yeah, it was a long line for the wheel call and it was cold. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, it was kind of cold last – Doesn't get cold in Florida, bro. Don't even start that. You were saying you were cold. (laughs) (laughs) It was windy. I won't say cold. I'll say windy. It was just the wind. It was windy. The wind. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Acting like you. Oh, it wasn't cold. (laughs) You even even said to me, "I guarantee we'll have people like, yep, Bob did say that." Yeah, yeah. We got people that watch the show. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Skip, I know last season was a great year. And the off season, you know how off seasons are in this industry. How you don't know if you want to come back, you want to retire. What do you do as a player when you're at that stage in your life? Like, I have a good coaching job at a high school level here in town, but do I want to go lace it up and put my body at risk for another grind? How do you prepare yourself as a professional to be either on standby or you know, time to let put the shoelaces? Well, um, I think everybody is different. Um, as for me, uh, I've always been a guy who wanted to play professional sports as far as when I was a kid. I just knew that was what I was going to do at some point in my life. But, I, you know, around the time I got to college, I knew that, you know, at some point you're, you're going to have to hang them up. Every great player, I've seen too many uh, great athletes mm-hmm. uh, retire and have their speech and their crime because they, you know, they – they used to be that man or they still are that man, but can't do it anymore. So I knew like, you know, it was something that, that would have to happen. And I know that depression is real as well. So I, you know, I've always been kind of having my mind around that at some point you're going to have to hang up the cleats. So um, as for me, of course it was a tough decision because I still can play and I know I can play at a high level, but at the same time, I know that at some point it had to come to an end. Well, if you're Tom Brady, was it now two years and he's still going on podcasts? Like, if the right team gave me a call, like, Tom, you're retired. <laughs> You've won all the awards. You have all the trophies. Retire as the GOAT. Don't come back and ruin your your legacy. But that's that itch you was talking about, though. You know, you, you're always going to get it. You see, you see older people outside running and jogging and throwing footballs with their grandkids. You know, it's just it's just the feeling that you get being able to play a child's game. Agreed. That's one thing I like about this sport and covering it because football season for me doesn't end like NFL college. Boop. Well, okay. I got three weeks off then it's indoor arena yeah. season. Then when that ends, we got about what a week. Then it's actually the IFL season ends during NFL preseason. So good. So when the Sharks right championship on August 17th, yes. 
Uh, then you get a week off. Then I can honestly say that the Jacksonville Jaguars have been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, and we're only week three in the preseason in the NFL. So I'm getting well, myself prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already getting myself prepared. Yeah. Uh, Skip, I know you, you're a coach. I know you have a business. Uh, this is your time to publicize what you do for a living and, you know, make your brand shine. Well, um, I'm with uh, VM3. It's uh, my dad's company. Uh, we do renovations uh, inside. Uh, we're contracted out at uh, in Ponte Vedra at um, Vickers Landing, but we also do side work. So uh, pretty much anything as far as like uh, inside, as far as tile, drywall, uh, uh, concrete, um, pretty much anything, you could give us a call. Uh, the number would be a nine zero four two three seven six nine one seven, and you can call and get a quote for um, any of the needs you would need as far as uh, home renovations. And you're also doing training with Renfro and uh, others, right? Yes, we have training with uh, Renfro Sports. So it's a uh, uh, Renfro. Justin Renfro is uh, training. Uh, I am training. Khalil McLean, Breon Murray, uh, Anthony Munoz. Uh, we also have uh, David Gilbert, which is located. He's located down in South Florida. Um, we so we're branching out, and you know we're covering all the uh, positions. So we have uh, O line coaches, receiver coaches, linebacker, whatever position other than kicker. You know we we don't know how to kick, so we can't we can't uh, help out with that. But you know as far as uh, footwork, uh, speed, agility. Um, and individuals, uh, we, we, we are here to help for you, for the youth. So you can uh, contact us with that as well, and we can help with your child. Got any rapid fire there, Bob? Yep, I got the rapid fire ready. So I'm going to give you 12 questions. Whatever comes to your mind first, answer it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you watch the show, but it's a little seg segment to end. So. All right. Uh, number one, coffee or tea? Tea. Early bird or late owl? Uh, early bird. You can't. One thing you can't live without. Mm, family. One thing you can live without. Mm, internet. <laughs> uh, summer or winter? Uh, summer. Favorite place to visit? Miami. Favorite candy? Uh, sour octopus. Trolley. Uh, favorite uh, comfort food, like when you're sick? Mm. Uh, soup. soup. City life or countryside? City life. Favorite TV show? Uh, sports center. Favorite movie? Mm. Uh, the harder they fall. And then if you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Mm. One person, uh, it would be my grandfather. He passed away when I was 15. Well, that wraps up the rapid fire. So we appreciate you coming on the show and we'll look forward to seeing you Saturday night in the shark tank. All right. See you guys. Appreciate you having me. Hey, Trump, do you want to be a part of the attack dance team or something? I don't think this is going to fit you. Sorry, Chum. There's always next year. And that was Marvin Skip Ross of your Jacksonville Sharks. F well, last year, Jacksonville Sharks. But still, you win a championship, you will always be a part of the Shark organization, no matter what. doesn't change and at all. And he has all. two. Yes, he does. He does have two. So, Mbabo. Let's get into some conversation what happened this past weekend to the Jacksonville Shark fans in attendance here today on the show. Thank you. Remember, like and subscribe. 
to our channel. Please share. We've hit a milestone for viewership in the last episode. Uh, can't believe that we're over uh, 5,000 views for just this show alone. So appreciate it. Much respect to all you guys out there. Um, unfortunately, we got to get talking about some news. But let's preview or review last week in the Eastern Conference of the IFL. And IFL had three games in the Eastern Conference. The Iowa Barnstormers traveled to the Massachusetts Pirates. And Mass pulled out a 54-29 victory. Frisco goes to 3-0 on the season with a 54-37 victory over the Quad City Steamwheelers. And the Tulsa Oilers travel up to Sioux Falls and take a 56-40 win over the Sioux Falls Storm. Sioux Falls drops to 0-3 on the season. Here comes that dreaded standings, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I know, but here's the benefit of the doubt. You got to take small victories when you can. We have the tiebreaker of the 0-3 teams because our conference record is actually kind of better, even though we've only played one conference game compared to everyone else. So technically, we are still... Uh, two games behind Tulsa in the standings, but here's the bright side of the whole story. We still have 13 more games in the season, and we still have to play the Eastern Conference. So we will have games against teams that we play in our conference, so we have time to gain ground on them. But small small wins kind of this this week's games kind of helped us a little bit. We really wanted a Sioux Falls win because if Sioux Falls would have won, we would only have been back by a game. But we're down by two, but we still got to play Tulsa twice, home and away, so we still have a chance to uh, catch them. The season's not over. At this point in the season is get to the playoffs, find a way to get into the dance, and when you're in the dance, that's when you make your noise because in the IFL, Last two out of the last three IFL champions were lower seeds, four seeds and three seeds. They weren't the one or the two. So even though we will love to get a two seed or a one seed in the East, still a chance, a lot of ground to make up, get in the dance, make some noise. And that starts this Saturday night in the Shark Tank when we host the Vegas Golden Knights, who just came off of a victory themselves as they defeated the San Antonio Gunslingers. Uh, West, they are 3-0, and while San Antonio, on the other hand, is the same thing as us. Out West, they're 0-3. We have good colleagues over there in San Antonio, good relations we have with them. Uh, they are like us right now, ladies and gentlemen. They're 0-3. They don't know what's going on. But for them, they wish they were in the Eastern Conference because the Western Conference is going to be a battle. There's going to be a team in the West who probably will win 10 games this year that will miss the playoffs. That's how the West is, yeah. in my opinion. It's the, the West is stacked. I mean, that's where you got Vegas, you got Bay Area. Um, Arizona's a little bit struggling right now. I, I saw an article this morning as they're saying, is it time to panic in Arizona? They're one and three. Well, they were uh, one and three last year, and they ended up being the one seed in the West last year. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of football left. Mm -hmm. I mean, we played Tulsa twice. Still, we play the Storm twice still. We got to play Green Bay twice. Um, that's all Eastern Conference games right there. Uh, we also play Iowa away, and we play Quad City at home. Those are all very much winnable games that I can see the Sharks running the table there. Um, we already see Gibson has started to make changes. Mm -hmm. So we do have a new quarterback on the roster. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce his first name, but Nicosi. his last name Nicosi Perry. Nicosi uh, Perry. Unfortunately, he's wearing a Miami Hurricanes uniform, but um, you're going to see a lot more athletic. Um, and then we also got a running back, which I think is one of the coolest nicknames, Stanley Boomer or Boom Williams. Um, and you're talking about speed. He's got speed. He's not He's not more of the physical type. He's more of your speed, your RPO type of running back. I actually posted some of his highlights from Kentucky on Facebook today, if anybody saw them. Um, but you can see there, I think, I think Gibson's changing offense. I think you're going to completely see a completely different offense with those two, with Perry being a dual threat quarterback and Williams with a lot more speed. Um, with Connor Hurt, I see them making a move, and you're going to see a different offense is, is what I'm seeing from them signing. What's your thoughts on the signings? 
Well, we knew from the interview we had with Gibson last week and the multiple interviews he's had with local radio and local media here in Jacksonville, he said that they're going to have major changes. These are the two additions that when you, when a coach says there's going to be changes, you knew there, you know, there's going to be players announcements and now cozy Perry. Uh, I know, I know he's a hurricane, uh, but he was projected to be the starting quarterback for the Orlando guardians before the Orlando guardians folded uh, in the XFL or merge or whatever the heck they do now. in those 9,000 attendants, building in the 40,000 seat stadium. Um, Nikozi Perry is a watch. I watched him at Florida state or against us at Florida state and Florida state obliterated him the time he played him. And that's when mining was in their transition states. And, but when I looked at him, he had some time in the CFL, had some time in the XFL. He is a type of quarterback where if you watch his film back in FAU and watch his film back in Miami, he is what I like to – how I mentioned last week with Daquan Neal. He is a run off – he's a pass first quarterback, but he's not afraid to use his feet. Uh, he will use his mobility for his advantage. Uh, one thing uh, – it's we knew Gibson was going to make this changes, and I, people are going to – look, what are you talking about? Gibson hasn't really done anything. Well, Gibson has had multiple MVP quarterbacks under him as his head coach. Mason Espinosa, Sam Castronova. Everyone knew Sam from Albany. Everyone knew Sam from Albany. No one knew Mason when he was in Columbus. Mason, some, who's Mason Espinosa? He's just an average quarterback. And he, he wrecked the NAL in the year that he was there. And he won the MVP. Gibson knows how to find quarterbacks. He found Connor. Connor impresses last year the first four weeks till his injury uh, in week four. Problem with Connor, he has the talent, he has the skills. When he's healthy, he's probably one of the better quarterbacks in the league, but he's dinged up. And in the in the realm of this sport, you can't you have to make moves to be competitive to continue your season or continue your meaningful games. Like we want to be in week eight, week nine, and we're battling for the fourth spot. We don't want to be week eight, week nine, be zero and nine, and clearly out of the mix. Then you'll, you'll you're risking your players to more injuries throughout the season. The cozy Perry, in my opinion, is that type of quarterback that can give us a spark, but his mobility will help defenses, you know, read him. The one thing I've noticed from a couple of defenses, Bay Area, after watching that film again, is that they weren't afraid of Connor running at all. They're like, no, right. He's, oh, we'll give him, give a 10 yard run here, but they know he wasn't going to run. And then Eddie Brill came in and they knew Eddie wasn't going to run. So they didn't, they never went with the RPO fakes. This is a type of player that they have to watch that RPO fake. Cause if not, Nikosi Perry can do a RPO take and go up the middle, or he can hand it off to a Logan Wright or a uh, Boom Williams. And I've watched Boom Williams' film in Kentucky. He has a fast first step, good agility, good speed. But he also, I know there's a lot of Shark fans who are like, well, these are just guys out of college. What, have they any professional experience? Boom Williams played two seasons in the IFL, one with the Northern Arizona Wranglers and one with the Frisco Fighters. So he has experience in the IFL game. So that gives that additional offensive experience to a running back position group uh, that we kind of need a you know, boost. Logan is still young. But you bring in a, a, a Boom Williams who has experience in the game, it'll help the younger guy get gain more confidence. This is I just see this as Bob as they're trying to spark something in this organ this team because we got a big we got a we got a gauntlet, not really a gauntlet. How can I say this? We have home game versus Vegas, then we're not home for three weeks. Four weeks. We're on a three-game yeah. road trip. We're at Arizona, at Tulsa, and at, I think, Frisco? Frisco. So, yep. got to get the win this weekend in Jackson. and hopefully you can take one, especially the Eastern Conference games, at least take one or take both games. And I know Frisco is good, and they look good, but I, I'm a full believer in our defense. I think we have a good defense. We just need an offensive match, and – I think we're a ticking time bomb 
about to just blow up because I think just a couple more additions maybe, or these two guys that we got can spark what we need to get back playing shark football for the second half of the season. And we're not even the second half of the season yet. We still got a second quarter of the season to go. We're This is our the end of the first quarter is this weekend against Vegas. So it's going to be yeah. – I seen Vegas last week. Again, they look unstoppable, but they were playing San Antonio, which they're having major issues on defense over there in San Antonio this year. Uh, but their offense can score at will too. So kind of a little vice versa. Can we get their offense and they – we could trade, so maybe even. But um, I, I like the two additions. Of course, I trust Gibson. Uh, he has a proven track record of finding diamonds in the roughs of quarterbacks and them coming out and really excelling to not just being average, but being MVP caliber. I'm not saying Cozy Perry is going to be an MVP quarterback. I'm just going to say the only reason why he's on this team is because, A, he was still a free agent. I'm surprised he was still on the market. And, B, Gibson knows how to find quarterbacks, and I'm confident if Connor is out for an extended time, I think Perry comes in, and he may take one or two drives to get everything going, but I I think we might get a chance where he could come in and be freaking Peyton Manning. First game, five touchdowns, no interceptions, rushing touchdown. We're like, where in the heck has this guy been? Um, but it's a nice little twist, uh, and for a lot of the fans out there, just trust the process. Still early in the season. As you can tell, the Eastern Conference is still very competitive. Um, but it would be nice to get a win against Vegas so we can stack the wins now so we're not chasing at season end when it gets kind of crunch time. What about you, Bob? I mean, no. I, I mean, I'm excited about it because, I mean, that's the thing is when Gibson comes out of a bye, last year, remember how many changes he made at the bye. Um, so when we come out, of, when Gibson has an extra week to prepare, I think you're going to see a lot of different changes. Um, Unfortunately, we're coming out of a bye week and no team folded in the IFL. That was the benefit. Oh. Of the, that was the benefit of last year. Well, the cancer folded in last year. Um, yeah, and we were benefit and got the best player on that team, the heartbeat of that team. Actually, the two best players on that team uh, with uh, Sam and with uh, Mar- uh, Markel Wade. Excuse me, Markel Wade. Um, yeah, all the rest of them chase money down the Mickey Mouse land and turn out to just you know stink the rest of the season. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Gibson, he knew how he knew who to go after. Um, one thing I know about Gibson, his teams before bye week are completely different from after the bye weeks. Mm-hmm. As long as I covered him, as long as I've covered him, he's four and one after bye weeks. That's with Columbus and in Jacksonville. So I like that. Get the dub. Just get the W. Get the win. And let's start backing them up wins. So and remember, we did help we did hold Vegas to 39 points last time. And that was with Connor throwing two interceptions. Mm -hmm. Um, so if we cannot turn the ball over, I don't want to get too much into it because then we got our game day show that we're going to air this week. Um, but I can tell you, if we don't turn the ball over and we can finally get that running game going, how much better is his Steve e when they're not on the field for three quarters of the game? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this defense, I think, is is legit. And I think with Dance coming in and playing linebacker, um, I thought Jordan Cole played well, but I think I think Dance is a, is a clear upgrade over Cole. I He's think he has more speed, and he has a man he can hit. He brings the wood, as we would like to say when back when we play. Bring mm-hmm. the wood. He definitely brings the wood. A lot like Jabari, a lot like Harrison, a lot like Munez. I mean, you got Jones. Um, JP has been quiet um, so far to start the year. Um, so hopefully he can kick it up a little bit. But I can tell you that that defense is going to be legit, and we have went. We have went so far and played. What is the record against the teams that we've played? What's their record against other teams? Uh, yes, uh, ten and zero. Ten and zero. So the three teams that the Sharks have lose, lost to are ten and zero. Mm-hmm. Strength of schedule in the IFL, number one. So, and remember that's mostly Western Conference. Strength well, that's of all. Schedule. Here's all Western a, ever yeah. map. Here, here. Massive strength of schedule, who is 4-0 in Eastern Conference, 14th. Yeah. 
So, I mean, you know, and we still get to play Mass here. Yeah. Star know. Wars night here. I know that one. That Star Wars night. So, you might see me repping some Star Wars stuff on the show. I'm not gonna rep it in the arena. Uh, you won't see me rep it on the show or in the arena. You're not Star Wars fans, but. This Saturday is back decades night or back to the future night or something like no, that. No, decades night. I got an email saying it was decades night. So it's decades night. So well, yeah. Well, anyways, hope how, how's everyone's bye week? I know it's been. We were debating on doing a show in a weekend, but we're like, uh, let's just have a weekend off and let, let our lovely fans and our watchers of the show, viewers, listeners, if you're listening to some podcast platform. Uh, enjoy your weekend. I know one thing that I'm really looking forward to this season or this week, a home game in the Shark Tank. Also, my father would be in attendance for his first game this season. He wasn't here last week, so he has to deal with the kid that gives you a death stare on the right side. Um, so I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> I have that shield there next this season. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. Get him into the arena. Hopefully he's the good luck charm. So if the Sharks do win uh, this Saturday night, he has to come to the remaining of the, uh, remaining of the games. Um, he's going to be the reason. Uh, but also, again, I mentioned, forgot to mention this before the show. Follow us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, or X, wherever it wants to be called, Rumble, and, of course, YouTube, at Pie. And, of course, if you see on the bottom left of the screen, this is not a requirement. Means Bob decided to do this. I know we we don't have the subscription yet limit to get the membership thing or nothing. But if you like to donate to the show, it helps pay for the expenses of the show. It helps us get gear, uh, upgrade equipment. Also, probably ticket giveaways, jersey giveaways. It gives us stuff to get involved. Our cash app is in the bottom left screen uh, in Sharks Pod. Again, it's not a requirement. Uh, if you want to donate something, it would be much appreciated. It will go towards the expenses. And probably at seasons, and most of the remaining of the money would be donated to the Jackson Sharks Foundation. So this money would be, be put to good use no matter what. Um, with that, any questions to our listeners out there? We had up to 20 view, viewers today on episode 11, I think it is, of Inside the Sharks podcast. Uh, we will be doing game day uh, next week. And unfortunately, I know – you guys want to get some recent fan or players. Uh, they were at a rookie talent show tonight. I think they're there live right now. Don't know where, uh, but next week we will get a player on. And the question is, I ask you, would you guys be interested with a five to 10 minute, like interview with a coach or a player, a part of game day for the breakdown of that game, just interview what the team's doing. Let us know. Put the comments in the description so we can either expand game day to make it more throw for the game, or do you like how we do the format for game day? Bob? I just want to thank everybody for watching. Um, everybody's watching. Um, make sure you like. Make sure you subscribe. We just want to thank y'all. If you can, donate. Uh, we, we appreciate that. Um, we are trying to get some better equipment so that maybe we can do an on-site maybe Tuesday night or something mm -hmm. at, at, you know, with shark bites or something. Um, so that's why, that's why a lot of the cash app thing started because we do want to have, we do have other view, other plans for this show down the road, but of course everything comes down to miles. So if you don't mind donating, we appreciate it, but, uh, no, I'm, uh, I think we're good, man. I, I well, look forward to this Saturday being in the shark tank. So well, make sure are. you buy your tickets. You've already tried to steal, steal my show, and you stole Coach's show last week at, at Allen Wing. So <laughs> <laughs> Bob's going to steal both Inside the Sharks and Sharks Bites at the same time. <laughs> Before you know it, you're going to look at it and say, who owns the Sharks? How does Bob own the Sharks? Like, he takes over the Sharks, if too. I, if I ever hit the lottery, if Nick's watching, I want to buy in. So um, as my wife brings up that, oh, yeah. So there is a meet and greet this Thursday at uh, – flight trampoline park which if you haven't been there it is really cool i actually took christian there for his birthday yesterday and they actually have trampoline basketball um they actually have a dodgeball uh area in there so i know those uh players or big kids are going to be in there jumping around and having fun so make sure you come out to flight that is thursday night from four to eight 
um, at Flight Adventure Park, which is right off AC Skinner Parkway in Jacksonville. So make sure you do that. Um, tomorrow we'll be at Island Wings Shark Bites on the South Side location. So we got a full week. We got Tuesday. So we got Tuesday at Shark Bites, Island Wings South Side. Thursday meet and greet at Flight Adventure Park, and then Saturday night. Buy your tickets for the Shark Tank, 6210700. Talk to David, Diana, or Fate, um, either one. But um, definitely uh, looking forward to the game this weekend and rocking the tank. And for you season ticket holders, remember the first four games of your season tickets, you can bring a friend to a game deal. Remember, call David, Diana. If you're a season ticket holder, see how many tickets you got a chance to give away to your family and friends to get them to the Shark Tank on Saturday night. I know 0-3 is 0-3, but one thing I know for certain, ladies and gentlemen, I love this team. I get kind of arrogant in this team. I kind of laugh when I see haters out there bashing our team each and every week, taking shots at us each and every week. Then I look at them and go, oh, you wish you were with us. Or in the words of, I forgot what movie it was, they ain't us because they ain't us or something like that. I forgot what movie that's from. Skyler, I know you know that movie. He's going to comment on it where I came from. Um, let the haters hate, let them chatter, let them take shots because you know, it's week three. I've seen teams start eight and three, eight and three and steal some damn towel. <laughs> and then the curse began and <laughs> they missed the playoffs. Uh, but that team that stole that team that has the towel didn't get too far in the playoffs anyways, but at least they made it. Um, 3-0, 0-3, whatever. Here's some fun stats, ladies and gentlemen. The last two years, Massachusetts started uh <laughs> Massachusetts started 3-0 and 4-0, respectively, the last two years. And they were the one and two one and three seeds um, in the postseason. They were eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. So they've had history of good starts. Fresco's had the one seed back to back seasons. They have yet to make it to the championship game. Let them have their early excess, let them flex their muscles. Because when time to grind and the postseason gets here, it's 60-minute football game, and you just need one more point than your opponent in the postseason. Doesn't care what your record is, because we experienced it over here in Jackson back in the day with when we were in the AFL, when we first inaugural season, number one seed in the, in the Eastern Conference, and we got eliminated in the first round. We've lost home games. We know that feeling of losing home playoff games. Get into the dance. We're 0-3. It's a long season ahead. I'm getting kind of jazz, getting kind of hype because we're in, we're home back in Vice Star, and I kind of had this little idea as the next stage of the Jacksonville Shark seasons hashtag Heel Shark because of the additions. People may say, "Well, how's Jacksonville getting all these trans?" Because you know this, Bob. You know this as fans. Every time Jacksonville gets a transaction, it's like, "Oh, they must be paying the player under the table." There's some award. Like, why is it just us? Why we get all the hate? It's because we got banners and they don't. That's why. Again, yep. I'm done my rant. Hopefully everyone enjoys the rest of their week. Saturday at noon, Sharks game day. Let me know what you want. Do you want a coach, player to break down the game for five, ten minute interview or keep the same format? That is Bob. I am Jim. This has been episode 11 of Inside the Sharks. Finally, we get to get the football games. It's time to get the football games. I love bye weeks, but at the same time, I like seeing my team play. No further ado, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you next week for episode 12. Nope. We'll see you Saturday. For inside the show. For, got that bye week in my mind. I'm done talking. Enjoy your week. We'll see you Saturday. Go Sharks. <laughs> <laughs>